This is a dual drive off-road scooter, 75 volts, 60 amp hour, made all out of aluminum. 4,000 watt hub motors. Disc brakes. Digital readouts of amps, watts, volts, and speed. Rear suspension swing arm. Front forks. Intake manifold to cool the batteries, BMS, and exit through the controllers to keep them nice and cool. This design was to keep the wheelbase short as possible and gain the most ground clearance. I bought a pallet of these batteries. This came out of a Chevy Bolt. I have to Dremel off the bus bars individually to get the cells out. And then there's two cells in this chamber. Here I'm making bus bar clamps, I would call them, or just clamps. They just hold the cell tabs together. I use a vise to make sure that the cell tabs are very flat and even. This is carbon grease to prevent any corrosion from aluminum and copper, two different metals. In other terms, it's called galvanic corrosion. That double-sided tape? Yeah, the reason I use this is it's thick, it's hard to break through, and it helps these bolts or nuts from anything touching it. Um, you know, vibrations or something. Mm -hmm. And it's it's easy to work with because it's sticky. But it, it basically protects this um, um, bus bar and nuts from something touching, like the frame, you know, bump or I don't know, something wear. here because this is t-rex duct tape show that t-rex in there can you see that t-rex mm -hmm. this stuff is man you should see how strong this stuff is talk about duct tape so what i do now is i make sure that this stays you don't peel you don't peel the red stuff off no because i want it to be thick as possible the red's real thin plastic and you have the other adhesive on it. Yeah, I don't want adhesive on that side. Okay. There's no point. I just want to keep it as a, like a foam. Okay. And then that just holds it. And then I take one more of these. protect this side even more because that's the side that would hit right right there yeah and then what i do make sure that's it i make sure my balance leads tucked and i come right up and block the sand in tuck this in in make sure that ends in and then that's in there and then i do one more to block these ends in just to fit in the frame better how I protect my bus bar. Okay.
Here we go, starting with the frame. One by one aluminum tube. These are just tack welds to get everything aligned and straight before we actually do the actual real welds. And there's an order you need to do the real welds because it will bend the metal in the direction you weld. So tack welds are very important to get a straight line. Grinding everything smooth. The frame is very light. Again, just tack welding. Very important to get everything centered and straight. Pretty much, once you get every corner tack welded and you align it correctly, you're able to actually weld. Here we are looking at the um, suspension system. I use T-Rex duct tape just to hold the clamp or the swing arm mount in to tack weld it and then pull off the tape. It works really well. And then I'll go ahead and actually weld it. We're going ahead and actually doing some welding now. So I had to preheat the aluminum and now we're, we're actually paying attention to the welds before it was obviously just tack welds. So it takes a lot of preparation and time here to clean the metal. Aluminum is not easy. You need to brush it, clean it and heat it and then push the welds each spot. Thank you. 
And when you're done, you should get this nice metallic silver looking weld that's bonded to both metals. The first time I actually test the motor out, the battery is up at the top left here, and or I should say top center, and we get to spin the motor. One of the best parts, because you don't know if the thing's gonna work. Well, hub motors are very quiet, very simple. No chain, nothing needed. They don't have too much torque, um, but you know, if you don't care about that, then they're very simple. So this was actually a beautiful design. I love it, having a front motor and a rear motor, because then you could double your torque. I take the original triple trees from the front fork system, modify and cut it to fit the very wide tires. What I made here is just, I call a skeleton beam. It just aligns the triple trees alignment to the center of the forks. That way I know if I need to readjust something, I could cut it real simple and readjust it. And then once it's centered, then I go ahead and cut the metal to weld to make the final product. And then here is the finished product. Um, actually, uh, I mean, really amazing. These forks and the triple tree clamps were a little bit difficult because the top one was aluminum, which I'm used to. The bottom one was steel, so I don't know what, the, what happened there. So it was a lot of work to get the steel one to comprehend what the aluminum one, what I mean by that is all the drilling and everything. This is the bracket I made for the front brake system. Ozzy Smith would say, this is my glove. That was for my uncle Vic. Uh, you guys should look him up. It's uh, Vic Smith uh, or Victor Smith. He is uh, an amazing artist and uh, he makes amazing trains. I feel like a lot of um, my motivation comes from him. This was an uglier weld just because of the two different type of aluminums. And you can, you can see right here, even if I preheat it, it doesn't penetrate the cast aluminum. The cast aluminum is that bottom uh, um, fork part. You can see how there's a little ripple there. Anyway, it works. This plate is to hold the battery um, just in its alignment. This is a battery alignment plate. So it's not really much weight needed, but it's just a battery alignment plate. Here we are with the controllers, getting them aligned. This is controller A and controller B coming up. Just so you know, I did not use these controllers in the final product. Um, they're just way too much power and um, ran into some technical difficulties with these controllers. Um, not that I would say they're their fault, but the manufacturer said it was. Um, anyway, I used the final results, half the size of a controller. So. Here I go mounting the front forks to the frame.
here is one and a half by one and a half aluminum square tube. These are just, I call them rabbit ears. They make sure that the strength of left and right make sure they don't move. This is just showing you before we clean it up the tech welds. This is the intake manifold and getting prepared for the charging port. Priming, painting, and finishing the frame. Believe it or not, this part actually takes longer than you would think, um, but it's done. Making the custom handlebars. Wow, was this a treat. Handlebars I had were way too low and I couldn't find anything on the internet to buy so I had to just make some out of steel So I don't weld steel that much. It's my actually first time welding steel in a long time. So it took a little, little bit of a um, Experiment and I use that little book cover there you can see to hold it up But I wanted to make some handlebars that were like those big beach bike handlebars Those ones that are like crazy wide and big because I felt that fit the scenario after you grind it and get it ready for painting, you can't tell I made it. It looks like a real professional handlebar. I'm very impressed with that. <laughs> I love it. I'm now wiring the system, which took a long time. It's all electric stuff, so there's a lot of wires. Um, running the wires correctly down the right chambers um, are not easy. You know, getting uh, you know everything to connect. A long time. Here's the battery. This is like I was showing you earlier my um, 75 volt 60 amp hour battery trying to get it into the chamber I made of his housing almost I mean it fits like a glove when you get the sucker in and look at this it's not bouncing around it's it's in there tight nice and neat just how it was designed with the BMS everything wired in now it's time to get everything clamped in and bolted on. Getting the display mounts. And here's the display. This thing will tell you everything you need to know because it is controlled by the BMS. So it's everything you need to, need to know about anything. This is the protective housing that protects the intake manifold and the controllers. So when you go over something, you bottom out, it'll hit this part. Now I didn't need it as big as it is because I ended, ended up using controllers that are half the size. So I could have cut the thing in half. But at this point, I did not know that. I am making grip tape like off of a skateboard to fit the area I want for my feet.
Let's go for a ride. Here we go. The terrain is very up and down, makes it very hard to conquer any speed at certain points. Plus, this is my first time driving this vehicle. Once you get going, the thing is a blast. goes up hills like no problem. And it handles soft sand amazingly. And is out of this world. Just ride. Right.